Everything is corn. French fries, potato chips, taco meat, soda, ketchup, mustard, yogurt, soup, cookies, mayonnaise, milk, beer, wine, bubble gum, ice cream, pickles, baby food. Even water bottles are made using corn. Virtually everything we put in our mouths is made with corn in some way, shape, or form. Even the meat you eat is made from animals that are fed corn. With a whopping 95 of the grain fed to livestock in America being corn. Corn is also in candles, crayons, cleaners, fireworks, paint, plastic, glue, insulation, antibiotics, aspirin, makeup, battery, explosives, and most importantly, ethanol, which is found in almost all the gasoline in America. That's right, even our cars run on corn. It's not just what we eat, it's in what we buy. And how we fuel up. So just imagine what would happen if there was a corn shortage. Imagine what would happen if we couldn't grow it anymore. This one simple kernel is the difference between the modern world and us being blown back into the stone ages. You call it corn. We called it maize. We knew all about the goodness of maize, corn, before America was America. You can't escape corn. Our modern society is completely dependent on corn. And all of this corn is secretly making us sick, fat, it's destroying the environments, while systematically robbing us of our money. But Big Corn doesn't want you to know any of this. Why? Because money. They don't want you to know that the corn industry is worth $86 billion, or $10 billion more than the tobacco industry. They don't want you to know that high fructose corn syrup is secretly making you fat, even though there's literally no reason to be using high fructose corn syrup over natural sugar. And they don't want you to know that corn is the most subsidized crop in America, which is a nice way of saying money is coming out of your pocket in the form of taxes and straight into the pockets of big corn. Big corn has worked tirelessly over the last few decades to keep all of this under wraps, to keep the public secretly hooked on corn. And to understand just how calculating, just how cunning and terrifying big corn really is, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. Stay dangerous, subscribe for more, and this is the evil business of corn. Around 4,000 years ago, corn looked nothing like it does today. It looked more like a grass than a vegetable. Instead of the big lump with knobs that we all know and love today, Come down today and try some corn, or we will sacrifice your newborn. <laughs> the stalks just had stems with super small cobs on them, and kernels protected by a hard outer shell. This made ancient corn inedible. It was impossible to eat. So ancient Americans decided that they needed to do something about corn. So they started selectively breeding corn to weed out those negative traits while enhancing all the good stuff about it. And over time, the kernels would grow to be way bigger and way more tightly packed together. The hard shell disappeared to reveal juicy plump knobs that were way better suited for eating. So corn transformed from little stems to the huge edible cobs we know today. Modern day corn is a human invention, and all of these modifications basically removed the plant's natural seed dispersal system, which meant that if you didn't purposely farm corn, modern day corn would disappear, which would prove to be a problem today. Corn was America's first genetically modified crop, and over the next few thousand years, corn will work its way up to become a staple of the American diets. But we were nowhere near as corn crazy as we are today, but that would all change by the mid-1900s. In the mid-1900s, the US government noticed that crop production was stagnating and it was making them really nervous. With the country's population rising, they needed to produce more food than ever before, because nothing threatens your world more than a hungry population. But American farmers just couldn't ramp up production, so the government turned their attention towards corn. Even though corn wasn't a very nutrient-dense or reliable crop, corn had one super important trait. You could easily modify it. After all, if the ancient Americans could modify corn into whatever they wanted, imagine what we could do. So the US government started pouring a ton of money and attention into this one crop. They built irrigation systems. They developed new industrial fertilizers to keep up with how much nitrogen corn needed. They started using tractors and other mechanical tools to help corn flourish even more. And like magic, corn production went through the roof. According to the USDA, the US is the largest consumer, producer, and exporter of corn in the world. Suddenly, the US had more corn than it knew what to do with, and running out of food was no longer a worry. So now the US was faced with the opposite problem. How do we make use of all this corn? The government knew that people just couldn't keep eating more and more corn on the cob, so they had to come up with new ways to integrate corn into society. They needed to diversify their corn portfolio. Corn is milled by either a wet or dry process. 
so it's transformed into syrups and starches that also end up as ingredients in other processed foods people eat every day. And because corn was subsidized by the government, it incentivized companies to come up with creative ways to turn the super cheap crop into expensive high margin products. And so corn oil was invented, corn starch was invented, corn meal, corn flour, corn cereal, and other stuff like ethanol and plastics. All these things came into being because of these government subsidies. So buy our corn flakes, you can drink corn flakes, you can drink corn flakes, please buy our corn flakes, you can drink corn flakes. But the most important corn product to come out of this was a little sinister something called high fructose corn syrup. I see this very often, almost on a daily basis. 15 million children in the United States stepping on a scale with a weight considered obese. Teenagers. America's future, the number of kids with diabetes doubled in less than 20 years. Two studies out today that draw the same disturbing conclusion. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. Concentrated sweetener from corn, high fructose. Fructose is a sugar, uh, corn syrup. Uh, it is a highly processed sweetener. It, in my view, it just stimulates us to eat more. Just walk down the aisle of your grocery store, check out the ingredients on labels, and you'll see the same thing over and over. High fructose corn syrup is the first ingredient. It's in pancake syrup, cookies, ketchup, jelly, even cereal and soup. High fructose corn syrup is one of the main reasons why corn is everywhere these days. It's pretty much impossible to find any processed food that doesn't have high fructose corn syrup in it. And this stuff is really terrible for you. High fructose corn syrup has crept into our food supply over the last few decades. Now compared to regular sugar, it's cheaper, it's sweeter, and it's absorbed much more quickly by the body. Fructose was initially thought to be a better choice for diabetics due to its low glycemic index. However, high fructose corn syrup and high fructose in the diet leads to insulin resistance, to obesity, to type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure. But that begs the question, if corn syrup is so bad, why did food companies move away from cheap natural cane sugar to this expensive complex artificial sweetener made from corn out of all things? Why didn't they just stick with sugar? Well, it's because the business of sugar is very lucrative. And back in the 70s, big corn won it in. During the 70s, corn had already infiltrated thousands of American products, but there was one last industry it hadn't conquered. Sugars and sweeteners. If big corn could break in and take that over, they would make more money than ever before. But there was just one problem. Sugar was cheap and plentiful. It was imported from cheap foreign countries. So why would food manufacturers ever buy expensive corn syrup that was complicated to produce when they had an endless supply of cheap foreign sugar? So Big Corn got together and realized that there was only one real solution. If Big Corn couldn't beat sugar in a fair fight, they would have to play a little dirty. The CEO of agricultural giant Archer Daniels Midland had an idea. Andreas had a close relationship with President Ronald Reagan and began lobbying to create a quota on cane sugar imports, claiming that the measure was necessary to protect domestic sugar companies. It was the perfect cover story. Put American farmers first. You want to support our farmers now, don't you? So as soon as Reagan signed that law into place, the price of sugar skyrocketed. And so every food manufacturer from Coca-Cola to Cadbury to Nestle all started looking for a cheaper alternative. And what do you know? You conveniently had a cheaper alternative in the palm of your hand, high fructose corn syrup. And Big Food ate it up. Now that high fructose corn syrup was cheaper than sugar, or should I say now that sugar was more expensive than high fructose corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup started being used in everything, and America's diet would never be the same. Today, corn has infiltrated every single aspect of our modern society, like what we covered in the beginning of this video. And because America and the rest of the world is reliant on corn, guess what? The government can't let big corn go under one little blip in the corn supply chain and we're all going down. So needless to say, big corn has become too big to fail. Which is why the corn industry gets more subsidies from the US government than any other crop. Corn is too important for farmers, the US economy, and world hunger to be left entirely to chance. So the government ensures the value through subsidies. 
And remember, subsidies is just a gentle way of saying the government takes money out of your pocket at the point of a gun and puts it into the pockets of big corn. From 1995 to 2010 alone, the corn industry was awarded around $90 billion in subsidies. $90 billion! And it's not like your money actually goes to nourishing the country, like they want you to think. Nearly half of all the corn produced in the country goes right into ethanol, while the other half goes towards feeding livestock. Barely any corn actually goes to feeding people, and the portion that does goes into the most unhealthy junk food possible, food that shouldn't even be allowed to be called food. And corn farming isn't any better. Growing corn takes a ridiculous amount of water, toxic corn fertilizer constantly washes off and pollutes America's rivers, lakes, and coastlines, corn fuels destroy the natural biodiversity of the country, and growing corn is a major contributor to air pollution. According to Harvard, air pollution from corn production kills over 4,000 people per year and costs $39 billion in health problems every single year. Corn is a poison to our environments, it's a poison to our bodies because we never evolved to be eating corn in the first place, and it's a poison to our wallets. And yet, there's nothing we can do but bend over and let big corn have their way with us.